One day a cultivation world that was called a game suddenly appeared, players entered this cultivation world to battle against monsters, and raise their abilities. At the same time they could take the items and the cultivation they earned into the real world. Until one day, a disaster came upon them as countless monsters arrived in the real world from the cultivation world. Ever since the monsters invaded the real world, the war between human and monsters became endless. A lot of cities fell in succession, the few remaining survivors were still bitterly defending the very last city. The city is about to collapse and if this continues, the human race is doomed. A colossal and terrifying demon lord suddenly emerged in the city, compounding the existing monster menace. Gu Qingshan solemnly declared that the only remaining option was to execute the desperate tactic of return together, an ultimate sacrifice, the sole means to vanquish the demon lord. Despite protests from a companion, who emphasized Gu Qingshan as the last hope for humanity, he insisted that using the return together technique was the only option. He claimed that only his sword could sever the binding karma. As he ascended to confront the demon lord, the remaining survivors contributed their remaining spirit power to support him in this crucial battle. Their collective hope was to bring an end to the wars and suffering that plagued their world. Launching towards the demon lord, the impact triggered a massive explosion. In the aftermath of the battle, the last immortal of the human race succumbed, marking the end of the relentless war with the demons and the defeat of humanity. However, Gu Qingshan's sacrifice earned him a chance of resurrection as the one who vanquished the final demon lord. On a rainy night in an unfamiliar place, two men sifted through a pile of bodies for valuables. The one holding the lantern questioned the leader about the late night venture and the potential encounter with monsters. The leader explained that the dead often carried valuable items. As they searched, they came across a deceased man gripping a golden sword. Examining the unusual sword, one of them opted to stab its possessor before claiming it. Unexpectedly, the sword's owner, not truly lifeless, thwarted the leader's attack and swiftly eliminated him. Turning to the lantern guy, the survivor sought answers about their identity and location. As memories resurfaced, he realized he had perished alongside the demon lord in the previous battle, raising questions about the nature of their current existence. In a sudden twist, the leader's body convulsed, morphing into a menacing monster that attacked Gu Qingshan, pinning him down. Thinking on his feet, he located a cracked bone with a sharp edge, using it to stab the creature. Seizing the moment, he picked up the golden sword, delivering a decisive blow to the monster's head, ultimately vanquishing the unexpected threat. Perplexed, Gu Qingshan stood amidst the chaos, questioning the reality of the battlefield and the man who had seemingly returned from the dead. A sense of uncertainty lingered as he contemplated whether this was not the present world but rather the cultivation world inside the game. He tries to call the system several times but there is no response from the system. The other man was terrified from Gu Qingshan. He asked him if he is a ghost. Gu Qingshan responded that if he killed thousands of monsters then he wouldn't ask this kind of dumb question. The man asked who he was and wanted to see his badge. Gu Qingshan took the badge from his waist and notices that the badge is indeed from the cultivation world, and it's a previous design. When the man saw it, he looked relieved that Gu Qingshan is from the Xiaoqi camp, he then asked him to follow him back to the camp quickly, because it's way too dangerous being out here. Observing the leather armor on the deceased bodies, Gu Qingshan recognized the outdated style from a decade ago. Curious about the time frame, he questioned the man about the current year. The man replied that it was the 681st year of Yongping. Gu Qingshan's realization struck, he found himself in the cultivation world of a decade ago. Abruptly, system notifications materialized, confirming the present year as the last of Yongping. The time flow stabilized, independent of the space-time continuum, marking a successful escape from the apocalypse. Identity reset successfully. Current identity is Vanguard Army Soldier, Gu Qingshan of Xiaoqi Camp of the Human Race. Activation of the War God system successful, will now restart the adventure. Amidst his confusion, a sudden monster appeared and charged at them. Calming his companion, Gu Qingshan assured it was just a normal monster. However, as he attempted to attack, he discovered that his sword skills were inexplicably unusable, adding a new layer of uncertainty to the unfolding situation. Realizing his straightforward attacks were ineffective, Gu Qingshan leaned on his experience. Recalling the monster's vulnerable point was its throat, he skillfully exploited this weakness and successfully defeated it. Spotting a horde of monsters drawn to the scent of blood, Gu Qingshan understood the challenge of facing such a multitude. Seeking refuge, he approached his companion, inquiring about nearby hiding places. 
the man pointed out barracks with concealment magic formation not far ahead, offering a potential sanctuary from the encroaching threat. Upon reaching the barracks and passing through the concealment magic, Gu Qingshan and his companion vanished from sight. Inside, the man explained that the camp had a magic concealment formation, making it impervious to monster detection. However, Gu Qingshan, sensing a tremor in the formation, expressed concern that it might not hold for long. The man, visibly worried, turned to Gu Qingshan for guidance on what to do next. Informed about the potential reinforcement with spirit stones, the man went to check the camp's reserves. Gu Qingshan, immersed in confusion, retained a vivid memory of perishing alongside the demon lord just moments ago. Yet, he grappled with the realization that it was likely in his previous life. People in the present world thinks that the cultivation world is just a game, until the monsters invaded the present world, people realize that it's not a game but it's already too late by then, and the outcome was the monsters destroying the human race. And the fact that now Gu Qingshan is reborn ten years before the disaster, means that he somehow still have a chance to stop the annihilation of the human race. Deep in thought about his recent battle, Gu Qingshan found the war god system screen materializing before him. The details displayed, name Gu Qingshan, Soul Power 45, Current Identification, Soldier of Xiaoqi Camp, Current Cultivation Level, First Stage of Qi Condensation, Abilities, None. The system elaborated, explaining that soul power could be acquired by eliminating living beings. It emphasized that the maximum amount of soul power increased with higher cultivation levels. The current status revealed that Gu Qingshan had garnered four points of soul power by dispatching two monsters. Contemplating the distinctions in the current war god system compared to his past experiences, Gu Qingshan swiftly dismissed the differences as unimportant. The paramount concern now was strategizing and navigating this unfamiliar world to ensure his survival. Acknowledging his current vulnerability in the first stage of qi condensation, Gu Qingshan recognized that he could only tap into and utilize spirit power at its most basic level. Gu Qingshan activated the first function of the war god system. This unique feature allowed him to directly learn the moves and abilities of previous holders of a weapon by physically touching it. Aware that learning new moves consumed soul power, Gu Qingshan picked up a weapon, revealing two skills on the system screen. Cognizant of the danger of using short-range skills against a pack of monsters, he opted for a bow, choosing to rely on ranged attacks. This strategic decision aimed to dispatch low-level monsters, allowing him to gradually raise his cultivation level and confront challenges more effectively. Confronted with four ranged skills on the system screen and limited to four soul power points, Gu Qingshan made a strategic decision. He chose to learn stabilized and consecutive shooting, aiming to maximize his efficiency and effectiveness in ranged combat with the available resources. With his skill choices confirmed, a blue light enveloped Gu Qingshan. Testing the bow skills he had just learned, he was astonished to find that he instantly grasped them. Although the accuracy was satisfactory, the power fell short. To address this, he infused spirit power into the bow, witnessing a significant boost in its effectiveness. The harmonious blend of acquired skills and spirit power showcased the potential for refinement and growth in his ranged combat abilities. Excited about his newfound abilities, Gu Qingshan's enthusiasm was interrupted by the ground shaking and a loud sound emanating from outside the barracks. Hurriedly, he made his way toward the source, discovering a faceless giant causing the commotion. Reflecting on the appearance of the faceless giant, Gu Qingshan recalled that it initially emerged when people from the present world entered the cultivation world. Puzzled by its sudden reappearance, he contemplated the possibility that something divergent had occurred from the events in the previous timeline. The man, terrified and unfamiliar with the faceless giant, questioned Gu Qingshan about the monstrous entity. Gu Qingshan calmly explained that it was a monster of the nascent soul stage, known as the faceless giant. Despite their initial fear, the monster simply walked past them, revealing that it wasn't targeting them. The encounter left them shaken but alive. Observing the cracks in the magic formation, the man expressed shock and questioned Gu Qingshan about the issue. Gu Qingshan explained that due to the tremor, the magic concealment formation had been damaged, rendering them visible to the monsters. Taking charge, Gu Qingshan instructed the man to go charge up the formation with the spirit stones assuring him that he would handle the impending threat from the monsters. Leveraging the skill stabilize, Gu Qingshan aimed and shot an arrow, instantly slaying one of the monsters. Confirming the effectiveness of ranged attacks, he prepared for the incoming horde. 
As the remaining monsters approached, he swiftly activated the skill consecutive shooting, unleashing a barrage of arrows to eliminate them in rapid succession. With the successful elimination of the monsters, the system notified Gu Qingshan that his experience bar was filled, accumulating 5 experience points out of 5. As a result, his strength advanced to the second stage of qi condensation. Additionally, the skill stabilized evolved into secure. Recognizing the suitability of growth-type skills for his circumstances, Gu Qingshan acknowledged the value of gradual leveling up. However, lingering concerns persisted about the untimely appearance of the faceless giant. The man returned, reporting that he had arranged the spirit stones, assuring Gu Qingshan that the formation should hold for a considerable duration. Aware of the intricacies of the cultivation world, Gu Qingshan grasped that a faceless giant's arrival usually attracted high-tier monsters. Recognizing the concealment formation's limitations against these formidable foes, he couldn't dismiss the possibility of imminent danger. The faceless giant's peculiar behavior, not attacking them when it should have, heightened his apprehension. The following day brought an influx of monsters, including high-tier ones like the Steel Blood Demon and the Evil Ghost Fire Snake. Surprisingly, the monsters showed no interest in the camp's occupants and appeared to be in a hurry, heading in the same direction as the faceless giant. Curious about the monster's destination, Gu Qingshan's contemplation was interrupted when something fell from the sky, a talking bird. Realizing it was surrounded by humans, the bird attempted to flee, but Gu Qingshan recognized its intelligence. Determined not to let such a creature escape, with precision, Gu Qingshan utilized the secure skill to hit and kill the intelligent bird, acquiring two soul power in the process. Examining the bird, he noticed a red jewel-like object. A pop-up message appeared from the stone, revealing a directive, target is continuing to move towards the south, command, faceless giant, blood-drinking army, attack with full force. It turned out that the strange bird was a messenger, and the red stone was the demonic army's secret dispatch command. Does the demonic army want to start a war? But that doesn't seem to be right, because Gu Qingshan remember every battle of the cultivation world and he knows that there weren't any battles between the humans and the monsters in the early days. Contemplating historical events and pondering figures who fell victim to monster sneak attacks, Gu Qingshan inquired about the current date. Upon learning that it was June 7, he recalled the impending deaths of significant cultivators in the cultivation world's history. The Sacred Sect Supreme Elder, Grandmaster of Formations Gong Sunji, and the Holy Celestial Maiden Ning Yuchan, two top-tier cultivators, were expected to meet their fate in the following days. Acknowledging the pivotal role of preventing the deaths of the sacred sect Supreme Elder and the Holy Celestial Maiden in averting the apocalypse, Gu Qingshan recognized the significance of the task ahead. However, given his current cultivation level, he anticipated the formidable challenge of confronting powerful monsters. As the system notification declared that Gu Qingshan had spent 24 hours in the alternate world, it triggered the war god system to bring him back to the present world. In shock, he realized the system's capability to facilitate his return. The system assured him that all his equipment had been stored in its inventory for future use. Surrounded by a blue light, Gu Qingshan found himself in a room filled with well-dressed individuals, confirming his return to the world before its impending destruction. In an unexpected moment, a familiar voice called out to Gu Qingshan from behind. Turning around, he immediately recognized Su Xue, his high school classmate and the eldest granddaughter of the Su family, holding the prestigious title of the Ninth Prefecture Noble. Su Xue conveyed that Zhang Yi informed her to find Gu Qingshan as he had something important to tell her. Surprisingly, Zhang Yi himself appeared, affirming her words and declaring that Gu Qingshan indeed had something crucial to share with her. The public nature of this revelation sparked curiosity among the surrounding onlookers, who inferred that Gu Qingshan was on the verge of confessing something significant to Su Xue. The air filled with anticipation as the impending revelation hung in the balance. Gu Qingshan remembered that in his previous life Zhang Yi stabbed him with a ring containing aphrodisiac poison when he was confessing, causing him to do perverted things to Xue. Having offended the Su family, he found no place in the Free Federation. Now, with a fresh opportunity, he's determined not to repeat past mistakes. People gathered around, eager for a spectacle, but disappointment set in when Gu Qingshan invited Xue to his house to taste his cooking. Despite her disappointment, he reassured her that it was just a meal invitation, nothing more. His classmate recognized a shift from the original plan and chose to take it seriously. 
he addressed Ching Shan, urging him not to drop the chain at this crucial moment and offering to lend a helping hand as his good friend. When Ching Shan's classmate reached out, Ching Shan swiftly grabbed his hand and tossed him to the ground. While holding the red ring, Ching Shan questioned its intended use. The classmate, taken aback, clarified that it was just an ordinary ring and emphasized there was no reason for Ching Shan to misunderstand. In his previous life, Ching Shan didn't know how wanted to harm him, but in this life, he decided to use the Su family guards to help him. He told his classmate that if he is not willing to talk he shouldn't blame him for being so harsh and that he called for woman called Sui. Sui and Old Lee stood before Shuer. Sui asserted that she had made it clear he could only summon her in case Su Shuer was in danger. Ching Shan handed Sui the ring and requested her to inspect it. Sui was taken aback by what she found, prompting Old Lee to inquire about it. She explained that the ring contained a potent aphrodisiac, revealing the shocking nature of its contents. Shocked by the revelation, Shuer listened as Ching Shan admitted uncertainty about the motive but emphasized the undeniable truth. Someone aimed to humiliate them. He assigned the task of identifying this person to the bodyguards, making it their responsibility to unravel the mystery. In the midst of their conversation, Zhang Yi seized the chance to escape. However, Old Li, spotting his attempt, swiftly intervened. Disappearing and reappearing in front of him with a menacing aura, Old Li grabbed Zhang Yi's head. Come over, boy. Life is hard. Why not enter a sweet dark dream? Old Li enticed him, promising to fulfill all desires if he revealed his innermost secret. Overwhelmed, Zhang Yi exclaimed his readiness to share everything immediately. Witnessing the unexpected scene, Qing Shan expressed his surprise and questioned whether Old Li possessed a sky select ability. Confirming this, Shuer explained that Old Li indeed had the power to hypnotize people with his sky select ability. Li inquired of Zhang Yi about the individual aiming to harm Shuer. Zhang Yi responded, stating he was unaware since his interaction with the person occurred online. Old Li faced Qing Shan and the others, stating that he doesn't possess any information. Zhang Yi, on his knees, pleaded with Qing Shan to spare him in the name of their friendship. However, Qing Shan responded by kicking him in the stomach, sending him flying across the room, and declared that it was time for their friendship to meet its end. Turning towards Su Yi, Qing Shan requested her to continue the investigation into the person behind the scheme. Sui assured him that he didn't need to tell her to do so. Shuer thanked Ching Shan for protecting her reputation, he told her no need to thank him because he was also doing this for himself. After hearing his response, she realized that there's something different about him from before. Ching Shan noticed that the system is still here, and the hourglass is restarted, it looks like he'll return to the cultivation world again after a while. It's unknown why the monsters in the cultivation world are taking action, and also there is someone wants to trouble him. The war god system seems to be able to let Ching Shan enter the cultivation world in the present wood. He realized that he should take advantage of that in order to stop the apocalypse. Outside a certain conference hall in Chan Jing Federation, Ching Shan and Shuer and her bodyguards approaching a chopper. Zhang Yi still begging them to let him go and he will not do it again, but they didn't listen to him. After they went inside the chopper and took off, Ching Shan was happy that everything has ended and now he can finally go home and rest. Unexpectedly, an air shuttle materialized in the sky and began its descent right before him. It dawned on him that this was the flying shuttle of the 9th Prefecture Nia family. A big man, wearing a bow tie and a noticeable scar on his face, emerged from the shuttle. He amiably invited Ching Shan to engage in a conversation with his master. Ching Shan accepted the invitation and entered the shuttle alongside him. Inside the shuttle, a blonde, handsome man sat behind a desk, with a girl in a bunny costume standing behind him. This man was Nia Yun, the student council president. He addressed Ching Shan as the top student, Gu Ching Shan. Nia Yun began discussing how Ching Shan consistently achieved full marks in every class and simultaneously held a prominent position at the Su family's steel armor tech company. He expressed bewilderment at how an ordinary person could accomplish such feats, suggesting that even someone like Su Shuer might harbor goodwill towards him. Nia Yin elaborated, explaining that given Ching Shan's background, he shouldn't succumb to the allure of Su Shuer, as many powerful families coveted the prospect of marrying into the prestigious Su family. When Ching Shan inquired about the consequences if he were to be tempted by Su Shuer, Nia Yin warned him that the outcome would be dire, possibly even threatening his life. He then posed the question of what Ching Shan intended to do in such a situation. Ching Shan pointed at Nia Yun, expressing that if he liked Shuer, he was free to pursue her. Regarding Ching Shan's own actions, 
he declared it to be his personal business, stating he wouldn't involve Nya Yun in it. With that, he turned around and left. After what happened, Nya Yun, left speechless, glared at his servant, demanding a progress report on their schemes. The servant, with a sinister expression, assured him that all was in order. He coldly declared that, within an hour, Gu Qingshan would meet his demise in a meticulously planned accident. The scene shifted to the slums, with Qingshan on his way home. Contemplating the upcoming arrival of the cultivation world in a year, he acknowledged the necessity of relying on the system to rapidly increase his power. Apart from preparing for the apocalypse, he also recognized the importance of being cautious of those malicious wealthy children. Entering a narrow alley, Qingshan found himself facing four unsavory individuals. One of them, wearing a sinister expression, purposely bumped into his shoulder. Without delay, the aggressor extended a knife and launched an attack from behind, insisting that Qingshan shouldn't depart so casually after the collision. Qingshan skillfully evaded the knife attack, swiftly turning towards his assailant. With precision, he landed a powerful punch on the man's back, bringing him down decisively. The attackers, armed with guns, closed in to assist their comrade. Unfazed, Qingshan retrieved his bow from his inventory, cautioning them not to blame him for what would unfold. Prepared for the confrontation, he stood resolute. In a swift move, Qingshan's arrows brought down the entire group. The lone survivor, visibly shaken, fear evident in his eyes, desperately begged for mercy, realizing the gravity of the situation. With an arrow aimed at his attacker's eye, Qingshan questioned him about their sender. The captive divulged that the Nye family's formidable fierce tiger orchestrated the pursuit. Fear evident, he stressed the fierce tiger's martial expertise, advising Qingshan to flee for his life, acknowledging the vast power difference between them. Yearning for the sword skills of his past life, Qingshan believed they would make any adversary manageable. However, a sudden head pain hinted at memories being sealed by the system, hindering access to crucial experiences. The system notification warned that the host remains under the watchful eye of the void, and the potential consequences upon discovery are unpredictable. In his thoughts, Qingshan acknowledged the need to proceed cautiously, realizing that Nye Yin wouldn't easily surrender. Expecting further pursuit, he planned to deploy additional forces. Unable to rely on his sword skills, he intended to leverage the war god system in confronting them. Gu Qingshan questions the man reaching out to him, inquiring about the sender, fierce tiger, and expressing a desire to speak with him. The man agrees, handing over his phone for communication. On the phone, someone queries about the results. Gu Qingshan replies, stating that the mission was unsuccessful and emphasizes his survival. Fierce tiger expressed surprise that Gu Qingshan took the initiative to contact him. With clenched teeth and anger, he asserted that even if Gu Qingshan hadn't reached out, he would still locate and eliminate him. Calmly, Gu Qingshan informs Fierce Tiger that he is offering another chance and mentions that Fierce Tiger knows his residence, expressing his intention to wait there. Afterwards, Gu Qingshan breaks the phone in his hand, contemplating the need to eliminate the troublesome nobles before turning his attention to preventing the apocalypse. Gu Qingshan instructs the man on the ground to depart. The man, surprised, questions if Gu Qingshan truly won't end his life. As Qingshan departs, he affirms that the man has fulfilled his requests, stating that he has regained his life through compliance. The setting transitioned to the bustling Changning Casino, where Nye Yun was seated at a gambling table, engrossed in the thrilling atmosphere. Suddenly, fierce tiger, stealthily approached him from behind. Leaning in, he delivered the disheartening news that the assigned task had regrettably failed. In a fit of anger, the young master, his expression turning furious, impulsively seized a handful of chips from the table and flung them in Fierce Tiger's direction. Exclaiming vehemently, he reminded Fierce Tiger of the promised assurance that no issues would arise. In response to the outburst, Fierce Tiger swiftly apologized, assuring Nye Yun that he would personally address the matter with Ching Chan. As Fierce Tiger exited the scene, Nye Yun's focus shifted to the companion at the gambling table. A mischievous glint sparkled in his eyes as he suggested elevating the stakes to something more captivating. Intrigued, the fellow gambler encouraged Nye Yun to elaborate on his proposition. Seizing the moment, Nye Yun conjured an image of Ching Shan with a flourish of his hand. In a tone laden with suspense, he revealed a startling piece of information. His underlings were on a mission to eliminate a humble student by the name of Gu Ching Shan. With a theatrical flair, Nye Yun expressed his willingness to place a bet on the unfortunate student's fate, confidently asserting that Gu Qingshan was destined to meet his demise. 
the man informed him that his subordinate was a skilled martial artist, likening the act of harming a defenseless student to a mere flick of the finger for him. He expressed reservations about the fairness of such a gamble. The red-headed woman positioned behind him invited him to wager with Nia. Inquiring about the consequences of a potential loss, he was met with a smirk as she outlined the grim outcome, the extermination of all Nia family members, abandonment of the mission, and a retreat back home. After a brief interval, the imposing figure known as the Fierce Tiger positioned himself beneath the building where Gu Qingshan resided. From there, he proceeded to Gu Qingshan's apartment, forcefully kicking open the door. He then informed Gu Qingshan of his presence, questioning how much longer he intended to remain in hiding. Out of nowhere, an arrow hurtled towards him from behind. Reacting swiftly, he spun around and seized the arrow with his hands, its force propelling him until he braced against the wall. Surrounded by an electric aura, Qingshan commended his opponent for skillfully handling the arrow. Simultaneously, he drew another arrow, expressing curiosity about whether his adversary could withstand the upcoming onslaught of all his arrows. Qingshan unleashed a barrage of arrows in rapid succession towards Fierce Tiger, yet none found their mark. Fierce Tiger, a master of martial arts, displayed remarkable speed as he skillfully evaded every arrow. Taking cover behind a sofa, he pondered in amazement how a seemingly ordinary young individual could possess such formidable archery skills. Inside the casino, the young master observed the events unfolding in Qingshan's apartment through a screen, alongside others who were engaged in gambling with him. The man expressed astonishment at Qingshan's ability to use a bow to subdue a martial master, prompting curiosity about the identity of this seemingly unassuming young individual. Nervously sweating, Yun questioned Fierce Tiger about his actions, urging him to eliminate Gu Qingshan on his behalf. As Fierce Tiger affirmed his commitment to the young master's orders, he was suddenly taken aback by another arrow hurtling towards him. Recognizing the impossibility of dodging the projectile, his body underwent a startling transformation. His clothes were torn as his muscles swelled, unveiling a terrifying form that showcased his true and formidable power. Qingshan, determined, shot two more arrows at Fierce Tiger in an attempt to subdue him. To his astonishment, Fierce Tiger caught the arrows with his bare hands and hurled them back at Qingshan. While Qingshan was occupied dodging the arrows, Fierce Tiger seized the opportunity, leaping towards him and delivering a forceful punch. Although Qingshan managed to block the punch with his hands, the impact was overwhelming, sending him flying backward. Crashing through the wall, Gu Qingshan struggled to stay on his feet, remarking that the strength displayed was more formidable than expected. Fierce Tiger lunged towards Qingshan, declaring that without his bow, Qingshan could only hide. However, Qingshan skillfully dodged the attack by leaping into the air. Seizing the opportunity, he slashed Fierce Tiger with a sharp metal object, causing him to scream in agony. Following up, Qingshan delivered a powerful punch to his face, sending him crashing to the ground. Qingshan, now in the second stage of qi condensation, exhibited power comparable to the martial masters of this world. Surrounded by a menacing aura, Gu Qingshan declared that he couldn't afford to prolong the confrontation any further. The death match needed an immediate conclusion. Fierce Tiger, seething with fury, raised a concrete piece overhead, vehemently vowing not to give Qingshan the opportunity to act. He hurled the rock toward Qingshan, who skillfully evaded it with a nimble jump. Seizing the moment, Qingshan drew three arrows and seamlessly combined the skills of secure and consecutive shooting. With precision, he unleashed the arrows towards Fierce Tiger. The three arrows from Gu Qingshan found their mark, piercing through Fierce Tiger's body and propelling him forcefully throughout the building. Meanwhile, a hovering drone captured the entire scene, transmitting the live footage to the young master. Catching sight of the drone, Qingshan swiftly targeted it with an arrow, obliterating it instantly and severing the live feed. The young master was left in shock, struggling to comprehend the abrupt demise of Fierce Tiger. The man, sensing the gravity of the situation, suggested calling off the gamble due to the unfavorable turn of events. This proposition angered the young master, who questioned the man's audacity to believe that Nia Yin couldn't handle a loss. With a furrowed brow, he departed, warning that luck had favored them this time but might not do so in the future. As he left, the red-headed woman characterized Nia Yun as someone ignorant of the world's vastness and the consequences of his actions. She pointed out that while he may have lost the gamble, he had ultimately saved his own life. Swiftly, the man bowed respectfully to the red-headed woman, addressing her with the formal title Your Highness. He explained their mission to scout for talents in the Free Federation and earnestly implored her to exercise discretion during the mission. 
While placing her hand on her head, she acknowledged the challenges of concealing her identity. The man was unveiled as Fong Hoda, the first guard of the eldest princess and a formidable hacker. Simultaneously, the red-headed woman was none other than Anna Medici, the eldest princess of the Saint Empire and the Queen of the Apocalypse. Leaning on the gambling table, Anna Medici inquired about Feng Huda's assessment of Gu Qingshan's strength. Feng Huda replied that Qingshan's physical prowess was ordinary, just slightly surpassing that of a martial master. However, he noted that Qingshan's fighting style was highly distinctive, prompting him to wonder if there might be some undisclosed and extraordinary ability at play. Responding promptly to the princess's request, Feng Huda executed the order and initiated the search for Gu Qingshan's data. The screen displayed Qingshan's picture along with information revealing his affiliation as a member of the Changning Battle Armor Research Division, specializing in mecha research. The princess clenched her fiery fist, finding the revelation about Gu Qingshan's involvement in mecha research intriguing. She declared that it was a bit interesting and emphasized the need to find a way to get closer to Gu Qingshan for further investigation. Gu Qingshan arrived at the Changning Metal Battle Armor Research and Development Department. As he walked through the facility, he approached a large robot. Reflecting on his past life before the transmigration, he pondered how the mecha technology had been more advanced. With the knowledge of those superior technologies now in his possession, he believed that designing stronger mecha armor to counter the impending apocalypse would be relatively easy. The key to success, he realized, lay in leveraging the advanced technology he carried within his mind. Heading towards the residential area, Gu Qingshan contemplated the idea that hiding there might offer him respite from the Nye family for a while. As he observed the cityscape through the window, he noticed strands of gas from the underworld permeating the air. This revelation signaled the onset of the apocalypse, indicating that time was running out and he had limited time left to navigate the challenges ahead. Aware that he would return to the cultivation world the next day, Gu Qingshan decided to make the most of his remaining time to train his cultivation. Suddenly, a system notification appeared, stating that the player Gu Qingshan had spent 24 hours in the present world and would now return to the cultivation world. In an instant, Qingshan found himself back in the cultivation world, holding a bow in his hand and standing in the same location as his previous visit. The man inquired about his well-being and questioned why he seemed lost in thought. Qingshan realized that his time in the cultivation world would come to a halt every time he returned to the present world. Gu Qingshan realized that upon returning to the cultivation world, he found himself at the exact time and place he was before his transmigration. It appeared that time in the cultivation world remained suspended until his next transmigration. The man, perplexed by his statement, asked for clarification. Qingshan, choosing not to delve into the details, simply told him that there was no need to worry about it. In his thoughts, Gu Qingshan pondered that he couldn't disclose the matter concerning Ning Yuchan and Gong Sunji to the man just yet. It remained a speculative notion for him. Moreover, he recognized the need to capitalize on the time available and swiftly enhance his strength. Turning towards his camp mate, he inquired about the presence of low-tier monsters in the vicinity. The man confirmed that indeed there were low-tier monsters in the nearby forest, questioning why Qingshan was interested. Gu Qingshan casually responded, stating that there was nothing special and he simply wanted his camp mate to guard the camp while he ventured away. Observing Gu Qingshan sprinting towards the forest, the man became perplexed, expressing his confusion. He remarked on Qingshan's peculiar behavior, noting that going outside alone made him seem like an unusual individual. In the forest, Gu Qingshan embarked on a relentless onslaught against the monsters, systematically taking them down one after another. As he slaughtered the creatures, he accumulated soul power and experience points. In no time, he advanced to the third stage of qi condensation. While he felt satisfied with his rapid progress, he couldn't ignore the realization that, from the later stages onward, each level increase would demand an immense amount of experience points, a challenging and time-consuming process. Suddenly, a system notification appeared, announcing that from that moment onward, the player had the option to use soul power to replace experience points in leveling up. The notification further explained that soul power possessed a possessive trait, once used, experience points could no longer be utilized for leveling up. Gu Qingshan received a warning to choose wisely when deciding between the two options. Confused by the revelation that leveling up and comprehension were intertwined and both could use soul power, Gu Qingshan recognized the heightened importance of soul power. Seeking clarification, he questioned the system about the nature of soul power. 
The system responded, explaining that soul power is the fundamental energy of sentient beings, essentially the origin of the soul itself. Upon comprehending the implications of the system notification, Gu Qingshan made his decision with a confident smile. He chose to utilize soul power for leveling up. The system acknowledged his choice, proclaiming that he had taken one more step forward on the path of the war god. It urged him to maintain his efforts and persevere in his journey. Qingshan inquired with the system about the maximum level his current soul power could be used to reach. The system responded, stating that the fourth stage required one point of soul power, while the fifth stage required two points. With confidence in his decision, Qingshan chose to spend three points of soul power to elevate himself to the fifth stage of qi condensation. Upon confirming his choice, a sudden blue aura emanated from Gu Qingshan's forehead. He was now convinced that he didn't need to rely on experience points to raise his levels. Simultaneously, he realized that this was something unprecedented in the cultivation world, a phenomenon that had never occurred before. Suddenly, Gu Qingshan sensed a presence approaching from behind. Reacting swiftly, he leaped from his position, narrowly avoiding the looming threat. Emerging from the dark forest, a giant purple snake revealed itself, perched on a tree branch. Qingshan recognized the creature as a python, acknowledging its considerable power among low-tier monsters. Gu Qingshan quickly realized that his current strength enabled him to defeat the python with ease. Anticipating a significant amount of soul power from the kill, he employed the skill secure and struck the python with an arrow, instantly ending its life. Landing on a rock in front of the python, Qingshan acknowledged the considerable increase in his strength. With his enhanced abilities, he contemplated the prospect of effortlessly taking down formidable opponents like martial masters such as Fierce Tiger. Retrieving his arrow from the python's body, Gu Qingshan observed that the creature's entire body was filled with valuable treasures, and he couldn't afford to waste any part of it. As he crouched in front of the monster's lifeless form, a purple smoke enveloped him. Recognizing it as the poison breath of the python, he deduced that another python must be lurking nearby. Swiftly turning around, Gu Qingshan drew three arrows from his quiver, spotting the python behind him. With rapid precision, he launched the arrows toward the monster, but the agile creature managed to evade each one. In a counterattack, the python lunged forward, biting into Gu Qingshan's left side and sending him flying backward, crashing to the ground. Gu Qingshan, realizing the dire situation, felt the effects of the poison taking hold. Understanding that he needed to conclude the fight swiftly with his weakened state, he acknowledged that he was currently no match for the python. In order to overcome the creature, he decided to tap into a powerful skill. Turning to the war god system, he sought to comprehend the skill two swallows fly together. In response to the system notification, Gu Qingshan successfully comprehended two swallows fly together by expending six points of soul power. Reacting swiftly to the looming threat of the python, he drew one arrow and purposefully stabbed his leg, heightening his senses. Aware that he had a single opportunity, he drew two arrows, aimed them at the approaching monster, and launched the attack. The python skillfully evaded the arrows and swiftly countered, launching itself toward Qingshan. With a confident smile on his face, Gu Qingshan declared victory as he stood in front of the approaching python. In a sudden turn of events, the arrows shifted direction, slicing through the air and beheading the python. The massive creature collapsed to the ground with a substantial impact, while Gu Qingshan remained standing in front of it. Despite the victory, the pain was evident on his face, veins bulging as he realized the toll it took on his body. The consciousness was fading, and he knew that the aftermath might not be pleasant if this continued. Drawing from his past life knowledge that the python's gallbladder served as the antidote for its poison, Gu Qingshan swiftly extracted it and ingested it despite its unpleasant taste. Following this, he contemplated the intricacies of the skill two swallows fly together and the unique ability of the arrows to change direction. While this feature made the attack unpredictable, he couldn't help but notice the considerable time intervals between the arrows. Considering the situation, he thought it would be advantageous if he could consecutively use this skill for a more rapid and relentless assault. As Gu Qingshan pondered the idea of combining secure, consecutive shooting, and two swallows fly together to address the issue, the system notified him that his constructive thinking had led to the development of a new bow skill. This new skill, named Chaotic Dance, allowed the consecutive firing of five arrows in a brief time frame, utilizing an unpredictable trajectory to assail enemies. Grinning at the realization, Gu Qingshan contemplated whether transforming ordinary skills into growth-type skills was the true value of the War God ability. 
Abruptly, a loud noise emanated from the forest behind him. Swiftly, he took cover behind the deceased python's body. A group of high-tier monsters emerged from the forest. Qingshan quickly realized that the current location was no longer safe, prompting the need to relocate to a more secure position. Back at the camp, the man rushed towards Gu Qingshan upon seeing him return safely, expressing relief that he thought something bad had happened. Gu Qingshan reassured him that he was fine but warned that they were about to face some trouble. Perplexed, the man inquired about the ominous remark. In his thoughts, Gu Qingshan suspected that the demon army was targeting the leaders of the human race. He informed the man that the monsters were gathering, and suspecting imminent danger, he proposed leaving the enemy-occupied territory as soon as possible. Fear evident in his companion's eyes, he suggested relying on the concealment formation to hide for a while longer, emphasizing the dangers outside where monsters roam freely. Gu Qingshan, however, countered, explaining that high-tier monsters could easily see through the concealment formation with a single glance, making hiding an unsustainable long-term solution. He urged his companion that if he wanted to survive, he should leave with him. Annoyed, he jabbed his finger towards Gu Qingshan and insisted that there had to be some misunderstanding. Shouting, he asserted that if Gu Qingshan wished to leave, he was welcome to do so. However, he firmly declared that he himself had no plans of abandoning the current location. Gu Qingshan implored his companion to consider their precarious situation, emphasizing that regret would be inevitable once the monsters arrived. The man, dismissing his words, accused him of speaking nonsense and insisted he couldn't leave because backup was on the way. He suggested that Gu Qingshan's mind must have been terrified by the monsters. In a stern tone, he added that if Gu Qingshan wanted to face death, he wouldn't stop him, but he cautioned him against trying to persuade him into risking his own life. Gu Qingshan accepted his companion's decision, stating that if he had made up his mind, he wouldn't force him to leave together. As they parted ways, Gu Qingshan walked through the forest, deliberately choosing the western direction to avoid the area where Ning Yuchan and Gong Suanji had met their demise, which was situated to the east of the barracks. Upon emerging from the forest, an eerie sensation enveloped him. Abruptly, an entity began to surface from the ground beneath him. Instinctively, he leaped onto a nearby rock. Swiftly, he drew five arrows and directed them toward the opening in the ground. Without warning, a colossal stone visage emerged, a tunnel demon. This formidable creature possessed resistance to elemental skills and the capacity to burrow into the ground. The creature queried Gu Qingshan about how he had detected its presence. Gu Qingshan burst into laughter, explaining that the monster was covered in newly turned soil, creating a stark contrast with the environment. He humorously pointed out that only a blind person would fail to notice such a conspicuous detail. Gu Qingshan then suggested to the creature that it should carry some aged dirt from its origin, ensuring that its surroundings remained undisturbed and allowing it to go unnoticed. To his astonishment, an entire squad of tunnel demons revealed their faces from the ground upon hearing his counsel. Gu Qingshan recognized the uncommon scale of this setup, realizing that it resembled an intricate assassination mission. Despite the challenging scenario, he found solace in the fact that the tunnel demons seemed to lack effective cognitive abilities. This reassured him that, regardless of their numbers, he had little to fear. Gu Qingshan then instructed the creature to return and fetch some dirt. Assuring it that he would patiently await its return, he added a playful condition. If, upon its return, he could still detect its presence, he granted permission for it to proceed with the intent to kill. The gullible monster, convinced by Gu Qingshan's words, requested him to wait and let its squad away. Gu Qingshan, relieved by the departure of the monsters, found himself startled when a man suddenly appeared. Expressing gratitude for the assistance against the monsters, Gu Qingshan was surprised to realize that the man was none other than General Gong Sunji. The general reassured him not to be nervous, emphasizing that they were allies. Gu Qingshan was taken aback upon realizing the identity of General Gong Sun. He inquired about the reason for the unexpected encounter, puzzled as he had deliberately chosen a different route. General Gong Sun, holding a hexagon shaped object, explained that recognition would facilitate their conversation. As he touched the object, he uttered, Six trigram concealment formation, open. Instantly, a Taoist temple materialized before them. At the temple entrance, General Gong Sun summoned General Ning. A stunning woman clad in golden armor appeared from within the temple and approached Qing Shan, standing before him. She conveyed that the strength of the tunnel demons was formidable, proving resistant even to her and General Gong Sun's efforts. Intrigued, she inquired about Qing Shan's strategy that had compelled the demons to retreat. 
Gu Qingshan responded, revealing that he understood the straightforward nature of the tunnel demons, exploiting their simplicity to deceive them into withdrawing. The woman, wearing a sinister expression, pressed further, asking for his name and the source of his knowledge regarding the creature's vulnerabilities. He displayed his badge and identified himself as Gu Qingshan from the frontline troops. Elaborating further, he mentioned his frequent encounters with monsters, giving him some insight into their behaviors. Upon hearing this, she removed her head covering and acknowledged the validity of his words. General Gong Sun mused that Ning Yuchan was the ideal dream lover for every male cultivator, anticipating that Gu Qingshan would be entranced upon seeing her. However, to his surprise, Gu Qingshan maintained his composure and didn't cast a single glance her way. Qingshan, on the other hand, pondered the peculiarities of their unexpected meeting. He had taken the opposite direction, as recorded, and wondered why he had crossed paths with the two of them at this location. The historical records indicated no encounter between them, and their places of demise were distinctly distant. The question lingered, how had the course of history been altered? The demonic forces arrived well prepared, rendering avoidance by the duo seemingly implausible without a compelling reason. An unforeseen development transpired abruptly. Gu Qingshan recalled a crucial detail, he had eliminated the messenger of the demon army. This realization meant that the command to dispatch the army had not reached the troops assigned to the assassination mission. Consequently, Gu Qingshan had unwittingly altered the course of history. Indicating the crimson stone in his grasp, General Gong Sun sought an explanation. Gu Qingshan informed him that it was the message tablet of the demon army, acquired through the demise of an injured demon messenger. Wearing a broad smile, General Gong Sun remarked that he had been curious about the abrupt cessation of the demon army's pursuit. The revelation unfolded that a glitch in their military commands had caused the interruption. General Ning Yuchan asserted that her spirit beast had injured the messenger bird. Recognizing the extraordinary strength of messengers, she interrogated Gu Qingshan about how he, with a cultivation level below foundation establishment, had managed to defeat it. Wearing a self-assured grin, he opted to showcase his abilities to the onlookers. Employing the technique of consecutive shooting, numerous fiery streaks emanated from his bow, striking a nearby boulder and triggering a sequence of explosions. General Gong Sun praised Gu Qingshan's exceptional bow skills, expressing admiration. In contrast, General Ning remained silent, seemingly unimpressed or unfazed by the display. Speaking with a grave tone, he urged the two generals to swiftly return to human territory, anticipating a prompt reaction from the demon army. General Gong Sun extended his concern to General Ning, inquiring about her injury. She assured him that she was fine, but suddenly, a surge of pain coursed through her body, leading her to cough up blood. It became evident that her body could no longer withstand the strain, and she began to collapse. Gu Qingshan hurried towards her, his concern evident, and caught her from the waist, preventing her from collapsing. Despite her flushed face, she insisted he release her, claiming to be fine. Concerned, Gu Qingshan turned to General Gong Sun, inquiring about General Ning's condition. Gong Sun explained that a few days prior, the demon army had attacked them with poison, and General Ning had been exposed to various types. Despite her use of a detox pill, some residual poison lingered in her body, yet to be fully cleared. Upon learning of General Ning's lingering poison, Gu Qingshan revealed that he possessed the detox item. Displaying the python gallbladder, he presented it as a potential solution. General Gong Sun, upon seeing the gallbladder, exclaimed with excitement, recognizing it as just the right thing to aid General Ning. However, General Ning, less enthused, cautioned Gu Qingshan that the demon army could launch another poison assault. She advised him to keep the snake gallbladder to safeguard himself. Gu Qingshan, maintaining a calm tone, inquired, General, do you intend to use it or not? If not, I'll just dispose of it. In response, General Ning swiftly moved towards him and seized the gallbladder from his hand. Observing the unfolding scene, General Gong Sun couldn't help but wonder if Gu Qingshan was courting trouble, knowing General Ning's explosive temper. Recognizing the potential danger, he admonished himself that this situation couldn't continue, resolving to intervene before General Ning's temper erupted. In General Ning's thoughts, she contemplated the irony of human nature. The individuals you trust may betray you, while those you've yet to encounter can show genuine concern for your well-being. Abruptly, she made the decision to accept the detox that Gu Qingshan offered, surprising General Gong Sun as his assumptions proved to be incorrect once again. Deep in contemplation, General Ning reflected on past encounters with young cultivators, 
labeling them as lecherous and unreliable during crucial moments. However, Gu Qingshan appeared to be different from them in her perception. Concurrently, General Gong Sun contemplated whether the persistent poison in Ning's body might weaken her resolve. Requesting eight minutes, she conveyed her intent to focus on cultivating her qi to heal her injury. As she began to munch on the gallbladder, seated on the ground, her body enveloped in a golden aura, General Ning began the process of cultivating her qi. Observing this, General Gong Sun instructed Gu Qingshan not to disturb her and instead accompany him to establish defensive formations on the periphery. Gu Qingshan nodded in agreement and followed General Gong Sun to carry out the task. Perched on a sizable rock, General Gong Sun extracted a hexagon shaped object and began intricately moving his fingers across its surface, forming an energy triangle. He then directed a burst of golden energy above their heads, exclaiming the word open. In response, a magical formation materialized in the sky, and invisible columns extended from its four corners, striking the ground and causing it to tremble. With the defensive formation in place, Gu Qingshan inquired of General Gong Sun why they hadn't called for reinforcements when attacked and pursued by the demon army. General Gong Sun explained that they had indeed dispatched message charms to the human race early on, but as of yet, there had been no replies. Gu Qingshan then inquired further, why is that so? Did the message charms get stolen by the demon army? In response, General Gong Sun remarked that it would be preferable if the message charms were taken by the demon army. This statement left Gu Qingshan shaken, prompting him to question the possibility of traitors within the high ranks of the human race. Gong Sun affirmed Gu Qingshan's suspicion, revealing that when they conducted an investigation, they stumbled upon the unsettling truth that there were spies from the demon race embedded within the high ranks of the human race. Gu Qingshan reflected to himself that the absence of aid from the human race to these legendary figures was now understandable due to the presence of traitors. Recognizing the perilous nature of their situation, he harbored the hope that the demon army wouldn't arrive hastily. Back at the camp, the man sat by the fire, relishing the aroma of the cooking chicken. He expressed his belief that Gu Qingshan was foolish for wanting to venture out when there was ample food and water in the comfort of the camp. While savoring his meal, an unsettling sound caught his attention from behind. Turning to investigate, he was horrified to discover a faceless giant looming over the camp. Before he could react, the monstrous being stamped on the camp with its colossal foot, reducing it to rubble. 